How can you claim that you are a close friend of George Zimmerman when none of that is true of you? You don't really know George Zimmerman if you don't know those things about George Zimmerman and if you don't know where George Zimmerman is and if you have not seen him in over a month and you have been going out saying that George cannot stop crying, which you cannot verify because you were not there. You have been saying, nope, you have been saying that there are lacerations and his nose is broken. And the only, way you, only thing you know is what George may have told you because you were not there and you have not seen him for over a month. None of this rings true. You're playing people like they're stupid and we're not. And I'm not a stupid man either. I know okay. what I'm putting myself up against, and I know the repercussions of this. I'm stepping forward for George because this was not a racial incident. I'm stepping forward for George because of, of how it has ignited all the racial tensions that we've had here for years. I understand everything that everybody is out there marching about because I've experienced it myself. And I wouldn't put myself on the line like this if I didn't know in my heart that George Zimmerman was in a life or death struggle. I wouldn't be here. I would heart, not be then? risking myself. How do you myself. know that in your heart? How do you know in your heart? Have you ever you had a gut feeling? There. You were not there. Have you ever there. had a gut feeling? You were, so this is a gut were you feeling. There? So this is were not you admissible there? in any court. Were you so, there? No, I'm asking you because you are the one who is saying you know in your heart that George Zimmerman was in a life or death situation. And I'm saying that we don't know. I'm saying that we have to wait till the investigation is finished. And you are saying that you know that that was George Zimmerman. You said on television that you know that that was George Zimmerman's voice crying out for help. And you have only known George for six years and you have only seen him in social situations. His mother told me that she is absolutely 100% sure that that is her son. And she has known that boy for 17 years. She has heard him cry uh, many times from a child all the way up to 17. She is saying, are you saying that you know George Zimmerman's voice better than Trayvon's mother knows his voice. I'm saying, and as you know, Lawrence has pointed out, I've had had numerous conversations with George, and because now have it's been revealed. Have you ever heard George Zimmerman scream? You know what? What is the point of you asking me questions if you're not giving me an opportunity answer to answer? Okay. Answer the question. And t as far as George raising his voice, yeah, I've heard him raise his voice before, scream. not in anger, scream. not in anger. Scream. Would you? You know what? This. Why are we having this okay, discussion if you're, not listening? Joe, if Joe, you're not listening? If you're not listening to my answers, Joe, if you're not listen. giving me a chance to finish my you answers, an answer. why are we having you this discussion? An Joe, let's see what we can do here. I, it's, I've listened carefully. You've said for you the entire thing, your entire view comes down to a gut feeling. That's all it is. And okay, and I'm glad you Not just a gut that. feeling. Joe, Not Joe, just, look, on. I've Joe, asked questions. I've Joe. asked questions. Can I answer Joe, that? You know what, Can Joe? I ask you why it's a gut, a gut feeling and why I feel good about it? Because it's an instinctual thing and it's okay. also because I've had what I have been told validated. What you have heard so far that has been leaked has been valid, was valid, is validating what I've been told. There's other information that is yet to come out that we're waiting for the grand jury to, to pass down, okay? And when that comes down, then it's a question of whether or not anybody else believes what the investigation turns out. Okay. You know, we welcome, we welcome the state's attorney looking into this. We welcome the grand jury. We welcome the Justice Department. We welcome all of this because, first of all, this was not a racial incident. And we welcome all of this because we know that if we weren't sitting here talking about George shooting Trayvon, We'd be talking about Trayvon shooting George. Hey, Joe, Joe um, we're going to get to that in a minute, the detail of that in a minute. I just want to explain to the audience that we've lost a little bit of the light in your studio, and so the image looks a little different here. I, I want to get to something that's been very important to a lot of people who saw you on Hardball yesterday, and I want to play a little clip of you there talking about this controversial element of the 911 tapes in which people think they hear a racial slur. And for you now, it seems to come down to a distinction of one letter. Is it a C or is it a G? Uh, is it goon or is it the C word that, that goes with that? And I just want to listen to what you told Chris Matthews about that. And we'll try to get your light back while we're playing that tape. So let's just listen to this. To me, it's a, it's a matter of interpretation of whether he's saying coon or goon. Uh, there are a lot of parts of this country where people proudly call themselves coon asses, in Louisiana in particular. Yeah, well, and I don't know too many people uh, who younger than 40 who use that 
term as a racial slur. As far as the other word, goon, I've been informed by my 17-year-old daughter that that, among her peers, is a term of endearment. Uh, Joe, as you know, there's been an awful lot of African-American reaction to that, uh, starting with Charles Blow. I'm gonna, let's hear his reaction to that now. Well, I grew up in Louisiana, and I have not heard, not, never once heard an African-American refer to an African-American in that way. I, would, and I never said an African-American Like American you said before, said you're going to let me finish. I and will. particularly as a term, any sort of term of endearment, and particularly, why would, why would you insinuate that George Zimmerman was using that as a term of endearment, whether it's a C or a G, after the F word, about a person for whom he found suspicious, of, about a person whom he was following with a gun. That is absolutely patently ridiculous. You know, the characterization of what happened out there has is, is been ridiculous because the characterization that's been put out there is that George was following Trayvon with his gun drawn, and that's okay, not correct. Okay, nobody said Joe, that. I didn't say that. Joe, that's, Joe, you're just dodging the question. But listen, uh, we want to talk about this particular phrasing because it really has provoked a lot of outrage in, in African, among African Americans. But I Joe, will, okay, please. I will answer the question. Okay, I will answer the question because, you know, again, it, it all boils down Joe, to let me interpretation. Do this. Joe, Joe, let me do this. Let me take a break right now so we can really fix your lighting during this commercial break. And then we want to hear your answer to this because you know, you know, as an African-American man, there are millions of people in this country who are very eager to hear you on this. We're going to take a break right now. We're going to be right back. Thank you, Joe. We're back with Joe Oliver in a badly lit Orlando studio. Uh, sorry about that lighting down there, Joe, and thank you very much. Hey, it looks a lot better now that they, they worked on it. Uh, so look, we, we left it with you and Charles Blow here in New York discussing this thing you said about what it is that uh, George Zimmerman, your friend, said on the 911 tapes. I think, remember, there's two words there, Joe. There's two words. He doesn't right. just say goons, as you might like to think it is. And I noticed that in one of your interviews, you said that your 17-year-old daughter has listened to it repeatedly. And she, she tells you, and she tells you that she loves George, but she's heard it both ways. And your I've heard daughter, it both ways as well. Heard, so you've heard it with your own ears in the most offensive possible way. I've heard it both ways listening to and it. And remember the word that comes before it, effing. Effing. I, no, That's I not a word that. that tends to lead into a loving term. You know, and goons has also been used as, a, you know, an insult to people as well. I yes, mean, it has. But which one do you think is worse for an African American? Well, of course the other one's worse for an African American. But why would you try to justify it and pretend it's an innocent thing on hardball? I'm not trying to justify it. What so I'm we're trying to that. point out, what I'm you trying to point that out. That's a terrible thing I'm for George Zimmerman to have said, if he said it. That's right. It is okay. a terrible thing if he said it.